Hi everyone. So depending on when you took uh, intro to graphic design, you may or may not have had a very complete um, understanding of InDesign when we started this project. So we're going to go ahead and just cover a couple of the basics. The first thing that I would do before I started in InDesign um, is that I would um, find any images. I'm going to pretend that I'm doing a gardening magazine. Um, this is free pics. I'm sure that I've mentioned it in other demos. So I have a subscription. I think it's about $99 a month. Um, and you can see that I can, I don't have to worry about high quality images. Now I'm not going to cover, um, you know, how to find high quality images because I've done that, um, you know, in other demos. So I'm going to go ahead and download this one. Um, you know, I, I appreciate this um, this subscription a great deal because you know it it does make finding higher quality images um, very very easy and really simple um, if you don't start out with high quality images you're bound to fail um, if we're just looking at these on screen they're gonna look great as soon as we print them out they may not look so great so um, and we've talked about that in the past so I'm going to download some images. Um, the other thing um, that I would encourage you to do is go check out and find your fonts. Um, you know, I, I always encourage you to look at abstract fonts. Um, if you go to categories, um, these are all their categories. Look, they even have a military section now. Um, I don't love uh, abstract fonts because I think that they categorize fonts a little bit poorly. Um, my preference is Font Squirrel. Um, I've also been using Pinterest, and down here is where you get the classifications. Keep in mind, once you check on a classification, it will still show you that classification. So if I, you know, continue to add classifications, it's going to show me comic display, and, and I, I must have clicked display twice. So um, download your fonts, you know, clicking, remember OTFs, uh, uh, Open type fonts are the way to go if you're going back and forth between a Mac and a PC. Um, so um, we're going to go ahead and get started in, Des in InDesign. Now I'm using somebody else's template because I didn't want to spend um, time worrying about it today. I'm going to do a, you know, I'm I'm going to do a fictional, a fictitious article about gardening. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to pages. I want to start on page two and three. Um, you know, you've created your master pages up here. I'm going to start on page two and three. Um, make sure that you're not on your master pages. Make sure that you're working on your pages. That's one of the things that um, happens quite frequently. All right, so once I've done that, I'm just going to start uh, importing my images and uh, my text and start kind of working. So I'm going to go to File, um, down to Place or Command D. And I have all kinds of things in my downloads. And I'm going to go right here. I grabbed this earlier. Um, you can see that it's 17 megabytes, which means that I'm assured the quality I need. But let's just go look at it, you know, really quickly in Photoshop just so that we know what we're looking for when we're looking for big images. You can see that this is actually too large. Um, while I'm waiting for Photoshop to open up, I'm going to scale it. I'm going to click on it. And I just come in here and kind of guess how much I need to reduce this. And I'm going to reduce it by at least 50%. And you can see that that was a pretty good guess. Um, the one thing that I like to do, um, number one, is make sure that I'm bleeding on the edges. Um, if I have an image that's going over the side, remember bleeds are about eighth of an inch. So if something just needs to be a little bit bigger, I'm just going to pop that up making sure that, and I'm going to bleed this image on all sides. It's kind of an untraditional way to start an article, but I really liked this image, um, and I thought that I could put light type on this dark background without any issues. Um, so I'm going to start a little bit untraditionally. 
All right, let's go into Photoshop now that it's open. We're going to go to image, down to image size, and we're going to notice that our resolution is 200, which, you know, we really want it to be 300, um, but the image size, the height and width are much, much larger than I need. So 200 is just fine. Um, I would normally increase the resolution and decrease the size. Um, but I don't think that that's necessary, and we've already talked about that in other demos. So now that I've got this in here, um, I can I can start out with a title. So I could come over here and drag a box, and I'm going to title this "Why I Love Gardening," and um, I'm going to keep my fonts fairly basic because um, this demo is not about my font choices. This demo is about getting started. And I'm going to use, not a, you know, I'm going to use Frutiger consistently through this whole thing um, just to get me going. And I'm going to make this 60 point and see how big it is. Um, it's a good start. Um, I'm going to go to my swatches and I'm going to make this white. And so um, because of this title, um, you know, I can see that um, at this size, which I like this size, um, it is, um, it, it's necessary to, um, increase or, or return do a hard return on gardening and they actually are working really nicely um, in terms of you know how they they are reacting so I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna create increase the size I'm gonna take it to maybe a hundred point because I want it to go edge to edge and then I'm gonna give more um, space between the letting so I'm gonna track that down I had actually accidentally set it as I was messing around and so um, you can see that I'm not quite to this edge and I want to be so I'm going to go 102 and see almost 103 should do it for me 103 again I'm not oops um, sometimes you do have to oops Sometimes you have to open up a little bit, especially when you're trying to go edge to edge. All right, so I really like that. <clears throat> and um, I'm going to go ahead and drop my text in. So I'm going to have um, just two basic columns. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab this column. and um, I'm gonna grab my text now you guys need to go and type out your article unless you can find it online and I'm just gonna find a article about why I love gardening I'm just gonna grab their text just to make it easy for this demo lots of short let's see the joys of gardening let's oop gotta spell it right first All right, let's let's see this probably is a long enough article and it looks great so I'm gonna grab this and I'm just gonna select that text Sometimes it can be a little bit of a pain in the butt to select text. I'm actually going to zoom out on this. You can see it's quite a long article. Um, and that will make it easier for me to grab this text. Now I did not get the eye in there so I just need to make sure that I bring that in.
Oops, I don't know that I used the text box. So I'm just going to reuse the text box to pull my column, and I'm going to paste. And I'm going to make that text white. There we go. It was just not showing up. So one of the things to keep in mind is we'll get this little plus sign, and it's hard to see. Um, it's not, I can't zoom in on it, but we'll get this little plus sign when our text is, um, I gotta make sure I gotta put that I back, um, when we have more text. Um, the first thing I wanna do though is I wanna get my type set to nine point type, which is mostly body copy for um, most publications. We may have to go to 10 because we do have a complicated background but I'm not too worried that there's going to be an issue. So once I've done that, I can come here and I can just drop in my next column. Now it comes in wide, um, but we're just going to scale it down a little bit. Now I could choose to do initial caps or, you know, anything else. One of the things that you, one of the reasons why this is so critical, um, and I think I am going to go up a point, um, is that if I do decide to go up a point, notice what will happen with the type. So I'm going to go to 10 point. Notice it reflowed, which makes your life easier. Imagine doing a two or 300 um, page book. I'm actually going to drop this a little bit lower because we have this little anomaly happening and it was creating reading issues right there. So imagine what would happen if you had a two or three hundred page book um, and you decided at the end after designing the entire thing if you hadn't flowed your type which is what we did when we had that little box here and we created this next la layer and we have more type here it's not a lot but we'll go ahead and click it a mat you know if we hadn't flowed our type which is you know creating linked text boxes which show us the text from one to the other um, having to go through every text box and reflow that type. All right, so once we've done that, we've got our first page built. Um, we're just going to start kind of getting in like broad strokes here um, before we go into detail. Um, and then we're going to come in, and by the way, n mostly serif fonts are best for this, although magazines tend to default toward sans serifs because they're short reads. If you're designing a book, you really should design it in a serif font. And the reason why is because um, serifs, those little feet, create a line that helps us uh, keep our, our place as we read across. It's easier on the eye. Um, I don't know if you've ever read a book where you suddenly just got tired every time you read it. Even though you were really enjoying their book and you're really into it well that's because you might have been fatigued by you know the 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 way the type was set all right so uh the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do another image box oops i'm doing a type box i'm doing everything wrong today all right i'm going to go to my rectangle frame tool which is going to allow me to drop in an image um, if i wanted it to be a specific size um, I would use this so I could go to file down to place and I I downloaded another image this one so I place that in there um, or if I just go to file down to place and click that it will just give me this little thing and it'll give me the whole image you can see that they've tried to scale this to the size that I kind of requested. So that's nice. So we're going to go ahead and use that. And I wasn't as specific as I wanted to be with, with um, the placement of this image. We always want to keep that bleed. Um, I want to end this um, right before this column because I still want to use that column. Um, and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to play off um, my text. I'm going to do a text box here and I'm going to paste that text that, you know, I have before. 
And again, I'm going to flow my text. I'm going to click here. And you do this from page to page. Um, so uh, we would pick up where we left off. Let's go ahead and back, go backtrack and do that. So we would pick up where we left off here. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and flow this. The reason why is because I'm actually going to go in and paste some more text. I'm going to paste the same text again just so that I have more text to kind of show you guys. And then I'm going to delete that. Um, and so before I leave this page, what I would do is I'm going to go ahead and pull my text box. I'm going to give myself a space for a pull out quote here. So I'm going to pull a text box here. And I'm going to come over here, click on this guy right here. Whoops, didn't give it to me. I'm going to click on that little white box there. Um, and I'll get this little this little indicator and then I'm going to come down into this text box and click on it and it's going to give me that text. However, that text is um, white on that first page. So I'm going to turn it black here. And you can see I have more text here. Um, and so I'm actually going to create a column right next to this. And I'm going to click there and click there. Now that text is again white. This is, you know, kind of setting us up for a disadvantage because we started with that white um, and we kind of have to continue with it. One of the things I can see is I have a little orphan here. So I'm going to come over here and just give myself just a little bit into that. So I don't have to worry about it here. And then I'll be able to hit return. And again, we're, we're still dealing with that white type. So every time, um, and maybe the thing is, is we'll make all of this black so that um, as we move forward, the text will be black. All right, so down here, I'm going to change the grid up again. So one of the things that we've done is, oops, I'm going to go ahead and flow this text right down here. One of the things we've done is we've moved to a two column, which I know you can't see, but we're going to bring it back right now because we know we're not going to change this type. We're going to make it paper, which is white. Um, we've moved from a two column, which is a much larger two column. Um, this, this grid allows us a three column. So we're going to use those smaller two columns. And then we're moving to a single column with area over here. Now this area we could put images or um, or type um, or pull out quote, um, you know, or a footnote or a, um, you know, indicator of who, um, you know, took the image. And we're going to come over here and we're going to go back to those larger columns. And again, we see right over here, we have type still available. We're going to grab that type and we're going to flow it. Now, it doesn't look like we have any text left to flow um, over here, but we'll check just to make sure. I'm almost certain. Yep. Oh, we did have text. Nope, we didn't. But the, the thing is, is I did flow it to this column. So why is that important? Because if I select this and I say, hmm, I want this to be 12 point type, notice that my type is flowing. That being said, your font will always come in in 12 point type um, in design. When you drop it in, you always have to change it to 9 or 10 point. Um, if you leave it at 12, it means that you're designing um, something for somebody that is 60 or over. Um, you only use that size font if that were the case. 
So that'll kind of get you started. Um, let's run through the tools. Um, they're very much like um, Illustrator in some respects. This is your selection tool, the direct select, or, and this is your direct select. So if I wanted to select, some, you know, this will this will grab everything. Um, this will grab pieces and points. Um, this is your page shift tool. By the way, let me just remind you. Um, looks like my eye is not there, but it came in in black. There it is. Um, remember to tab. Um, so hit hit tab um, when you need to. If it's too big, you can set your tabs or, um, you know, just sometimes it's easier for me not to set the tabs and just to say one, two, three, four, five. Um, so don't forget your, your indents um, when you're designing. Um, it's one of the things that happens. If you don't want an indent, having a full return just keep in mind you're you're wasting space when you have that full return um, but in many cases you have the space to use um, magazines will will tell you whether the you have a certain amount of pages and you know you have to do it with those anyway so we um, we have the gap tool um, we have the content placer tool. Um, and so I have not actually messed with this much, um, but I will be certain to um, come back and give you more information about that. Text tool, which allows me to, to pull in my text. You also have options, you know, type on a path, but in my opinion, it's best to do type on a path in Illustrator. Um, your line tool, pen tool, pencil tool, all of these are going to be real familiar with for you because you've worked in Illustrator. Your rectangle frame tool, now that's how I drew this. Remember you can draw a box because you are indicating a specific size and placement that you want and then place inside that box or you can just go down a file in place you can see you can put them in an ellipse or a polygon as well um, this is just a rectangular tool if you wanted to do um, flat color scissors tool um, same thing is as illustrator not super useful free road tra free transform um, tool but also this is um, an option uh, eyedropper tool you know this works the same as um, illustrator palettes um, the one thing I will say is palettes are a little bit annoying in this program um, and um, I don't I don't love the palettes um, here uh, I tend to create my own palettes here as opposed to you know in illustrator there are some really nicely built ones um, so yeah, um, one of the things that I encourage you to do is, um, there is a channel called the InDesigner, um, which seems really old. Um, but these, if you start working your way through all of his videos, and I think starting in episode 11, it becomes, um, videos. Yep. Um. He actually does a really good job of just going through the basic tools um, and doing um, some nesting of type and, and all of that. Um, and, uh, you know, I would encourage you to watch, you know, 11 through 55 of his videos. All right. Thank you. Bye.